Welcome to GSAP Utility Methods. GSAP's Utility Methods can save you a ton of time on a variety of creative coding tasks. They'll help you get random numbers, shuffle arrays, map numbers to a range, and so much more. So through this series, I'm going to walk you through a number of small demos so you can understand how these utility functions work. Here I'm using map range to translate my mouse's X and Y position to the scale of this arrow. So if we focus just on the mouse X, you'll notice that we can get a value as low as zero here, which is gonna give us a scale X value of one. And as the mouse X grows, we're gonna go all the way up to a scale X of four. And we'll also do the same thing on the Y axis. So although the mouse X and mouse Y are generating fairly large numbers, they're being translated to much smaller scale values between one and four. In this demo, we're doing something a little bit different. You'll notice that as the mouse gets closer to the center, the arrow grows, and as it moves away, it shrinks down. So what we're doing here is we're mapping the distance of the mouse from center to a scale value between one and four for that arrow. In this demo, the X position of the mouse is going to be translated to a rotation value of the arrow, but as you may notice, it is snapping to 45 degree increments. For extra measure, we'll use GSAP's pipe utility that allows us to chain utility methods together. So we can pass a value into map range and then run it through snap. And then once we've gone through these more basic implementations, We'll kick things up a notch and we'll build this little interactive scroller, okay? Notice how when I go close to the center, it slows down. When I go to the edges, it speeds up. And we also change direction as the mouse crosses over the center line, all right? So this is a really nice desktop experience where you can tap into the pointer position, all right? So we'll definitely get there, but we gotta work through the basics first. So let's start off easy. To access the utility methods, visit the main page of the GSAP docs, and on the left down below, you'll see the utility methods in the nav. And on this page, you will get this video that I strongly recommend that you watch and a list of all the available utility methods. There's quite a few, and in this series, we're gonna start off with map range, pipe, and snap. Each one of these methods has its own detail page that does a great job of describing how the methods work and the different parameters that they take in with a number of code samples. Now, oftentimes reading the docs gives me a good sense of what these methods do, but I sometimes struggle to understand where I'm going to use them. In this first demo, we're going to adjust the scale of the arrow as I move the mouse around. Before we get into the JavaScript for doing that, let's just go over the basic demo structure. We start off with this demo div, which is 600 pixels wide by 600 pixels tall with a black border. We then have a vertical line going down the center. Then we have our box, which is blue with a white SVG arrow in it pointing up. Towards the bottom, I have this span with an ID of mouse X, which is going to be showing us our mouse position when we move around. And all that happens with this code right here, where we're adding an event listener to our demo for mouse move. And every time the mouse moves, that mouse X span is gonna have its text content updated with the events offset X. And what that's generally going to give us is a number between zero and 600 to the right. Now you may notice that there are times where I can go outside and maybe it'll read something as 601 to the right, can't do it right now, or to the left, sometimes I might get a negative number. But most of the time, we're gonna be working with values between zero and 600, and we want to convert those to scale values. And currently, this arrow has a natural scale of one, and if we ever gave it a scale of 600, it would get very, very big. To illustrate that, I'm just gonna start by using a GSAP set that will target our box, and we're going to set the scale to be whatever our e dot offset x value is. Now you'll see that when I start over to the left here, with a mouse x of three, the arrow is three times its normal size, and it's just going to get ridiculously bigger, okay? And you may also notice that there is some sort of glitching and freaking out going on that's really not good. Well. 
that's because the arrow is now intercepting my pointer events and you'll notice that I'm getting a mouse X of 23 which is very strange so let me go ahead and get rid of this GSAP set here and just as I'm moving my mouse around notice that as I get close to the arrow here the mouse X is 263 but when I roll over the box you'll see it goes down all right I'm getting these very low values here okay that's because the box is interfering with my mouse events or I should say pointer events and for the sake of this demo the easiest way to get rid of that is to go into the CSS and what we can do is tell these child elements of the demo that they should have pointer events set to none so I'm going to just uncomment this out and now you'll see that when I roll over the arrow that I'm still getting the offset X values for the demo, okay? That's gonna be much better. And I love showing you these things because these are little glitches that everybody is going to face. Now I'm gonna go back and reactivate this set and we'll be back to a place where the arrow is going to get very big very quickly, all right? Now it's 59 times its normal size and it gets so big that all we see is this huge white space in the middle, all right? so. If we directly set our mouse X values to the scale, this is not what we want at all. So what we need to do is sort of normalize the mouse X values. And that's where GSAP's map range utility comes in handy. It allows us to map values from an input range to their equivalent value in an output range. So let me show you how that would work. I'm gonna go over here and I'm going to set up a new variable called scale X and I'm gonna set it equal to whatever the gsap.utils.map range function returns when I pass in the proper parameters. And we're gonna start with the lowest value on the input range and that's going to be a zero. Consider the input range the numbers that are being generated by my mouse movement. So my mouse can be all the way to the left at zero and the maximum of the input range is going to be that 600 because my demo is 600 pixels wide. Now the output range is going to represent the scale values that I want. So the lowest scale value I want is going to be a one and let's make the maximum output value four. And the last parameter I need is the number or the value that's going to actually be mapped between these two ranges and that's going to be e.offsetx. Once that's in place, I'm now going to update my little set here with my new scale x variable that was returned by this function. And now you should see that when I start out at the left, the arrow is very small, but as I move to the right, it gets much bigger, okay? And all the way at the right, it only goes between a value of one and four. So I've mapped my input range from the mouse to my output range between one and four for my scale values. Now it's important to note that when we are setting the scale with GSAP, it applies this value to the scale X and scale Y. So right now I am getting a proportional scale as I move from left to right. But what if I wanted to control the Y scale based on the Y position of the mouse as well? Well, first I would change this set over to be only operating on the scale X property of the box. And now you'll see moving left to right only stretches it horizontally. Vertically does nothing. So if I wanted to handle the vertical separately, I would just do a little copy and paste by taking everything I did for the scale X and making a copy for the scale Y, which would mean changing the offset X to an offset Y. And then in this set here, I could add a scale y value and set it to my scale y variable. And now watch what happens. As I move up and down, you'll see that it shrinks vertically and to the side it stretches and gets wider. And then if we go around in a circle, we get this weird kind of funky little thing going on, all right? So it's definitely fun to play with these things and it's amazing what you can do with interactivity without using any real GSAP tweens. Now this all works well and good, but I do want to go over a slight optimization that we can make. So this set here is really easy to code and clearly it works, but the problem with using a set is that it's actually a tween with zero duration. 
and all tweens need to record starting and ending values and they have loads of properties, methods, and callbacks, and none of these are gonna be used at all, and we're just gonna be repeatedly creating all these big objects that need to record things, and it's not necessary. So when we're just setting values in this fashion, we can tap into what's called a quick setter. So up here, I'm gonna create a variable called setScaleX, and I'm gonna set it equal to gsap quick setter and this method needs to know the object that I'm setting the properties on which is going to be my box and they also need to pass in the property that will be set in this case it's going to be scale X now if I was using something that needed units declared that would be the third parameter like something like pixels or degrees but we don't need that with scale now quick setters technically only work on one property per element so for setting the scale Y, I will need to do that as well with another quick setter. So a copy and paste, we'll make that pretty easy. We'll change this to a scale Y and also the property to a scale Y. So now in order to tap into the functions that the quick setter creates, I'm gonna go into my code here and I'm going to reference that function using set scale X and I'm gonna pass in the scale X value in the proper range. And I'm gonna do the same exact thing again for the scale Y. And now what you'll see is the exact same behavior, but it's going to be much more performant, even up to 200% more performant, all right? So yes, right now it probably looks the same, but under the hood, things are working much better. And this would be especially useful if you were changing more properties on more objects. But you're gonna notice this is exactly silky smooth, and we'll be using these quick setters more in this series. So as always, play around with this code, change the properties around, and try to think of other ways you can use map range. If you're feeling adventurous, why don't you try to solve next week's demo? where we're going to make this item larger as the mouse gets closer to center and then gets smaller as it leaves center. And if you're still questioning where you'll use stuff like this, check out this site. In this example here, the scroll top position of each image is being mapped to its height. So you get this nice expanding elastic effect while the images scroll up the page. And we'll jump into that someday soon too.